What the hell? Hi, my name's Ron. You ever wonder why you can make all these balls and miss a shot like that? Well, today we're going to show you why you miss and how to correct it. Because every one of these shots come up in a pool game. We feel that a visual of all these shots will help you to remember it longer and maybe not make the same basic mistakes everyone else makes if you use these techniques. Hi, I'm Garland. The reason Ron missed that shot is because he just shot too hard, which is a common mistake amongst your average pool players. The reason the ball will not take that pocket shot hard is because it doesn't have enough time to deflect in. The ball will deflect out. The ball will be shot hard, will hit this rail, hit this rail, and bounce out because the center of the pocket is now here. The only time you can shoot this ball really hard is if it is a 90 degree angle with this pocket because the center of the pocket changes with the angle of each shot. The center will change from here to here to here to here and finally back over here. Remember, the center of the pocket changes with the angle of the shot. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is a cue ball frozen to the rail with a straight in shot at the corner pocket. Again, Garland, will set that up for me. Man, I can't believe I missed it like that. Can you come over here and show me how to do it? The reason Ron missed that shot is because the butt of his cue stick was elevated at the improper angle. It was too high. If you raise the butt of your cue stick coming down on the rail with the cue ball, you will put English on the ball, causing deflection to take effect. If you're going to shoot this ball, you have to lower the butt of your cue stick, shoot center ball, even with the table, and shoot it easy, and the ball will go every time. Right now we're going to show you a basic draw shot. Well, let me try it again. Hold on. It's supposed to draw. I don't know why it doesn't. Oh man, you shoot like an old man. Alright, see if you can do it any better. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Okay, the reason Garland missed that shot was because he didn't follow through and he's putting a stop shot on it instead of a draw. A draw shot is a tip and a half below center on the cue ball and you have to follow through. Now I'm going to show you how to do it. Remember, you got to follow through and it's a tip and a half below center. Let me do it one more time. Well, that's how you do it. There you go. Now we're going to show you a mistake that the average pool player might make. He doesn't stroke the ball, he pokes the ball. So we're going to show you the difference. Shorty, you come over here and show them how to do it. I'm going to try and demonstrate the proper stroke. As you saw, Ron poked it. In order to make a ball, you have to have a smooth stroke.
was good. Let's do it again. Remember, you have to follow through with a smooth stroke in order to hit the ball properly. That was great. This shot is to show you how to make a carom follow shot. Combination follow where if somebody's blocking your pocket, both balls will go in. And you do this when the balls are close together like that by putting draw on the cue ball, which causes the other ball to follow and roll forward, and it'll go every time. Just like that. Now I'm going to show you how to make the same shot, but this time the balls are further apart. The only way you can do this is to follow it instead of draw. So you shoot up at the top in the center, and it goes every time. What we're going to show you now is a simple cut shot and why the average pool player will miss it every now and then. The problem is that the balls are round. In other words, I want to cut the 13 into that side pocket. But if you aim at the spot, it's not going to go in because the balls are round. It's going to hit before it gets to that spot. Example. In order to make a thin cut shot, you have to actually aim outside the ball. In other words, you want the edge of the cue ball to hit the outside edge of this ball right here. So you aim for outside the ball. Some people get a line on the rail to aim at. Some people just eye it. However, you're not aiming at the spot because this outside edge of this ball, it's got to hit the outside edge of that ball, so you aim outside the ball. And it'll go every time. This is going to be a shot using center ball on a, just an average tangent line shot. Your average pool player doesn't even know what a tangent line is. A tangent line is where the balls, when they hit, the angle they're going to come off at. And it's a 90 degree angle where these two balls meet, there's a 90 degree angle. So when I hit the 13 ball, it will follow the tangent line into this pocket. You can hit this ball from half a ball here to half a ball here, and we'll go forward. If you aim up here, it'll throw it this way. If you cut it too much, it'll throw it back over here. Anyway, the 13 ball will follow that tangent line, that 90 degree angle, where it's touching the 7. And that's how you do it. Okay, this is basically the same shot that Garland just showed you. We're going to use the tangent lines, and we're going to have a, what we call a carom shot. But you have to have that tangent line in order to make this carom shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim this ball into that ball and the, and the seven ball will go right there. And I'm going to show you how to do it. You aim the 13 for the center of the pocket. That means the spot that you need to aim at is right here on that 13. And you aim this ball for that spot. Now. When this ball is shot into the 13 at a straight line like that using center on the cue ball, your tangent line is right here. Just like the one Garland has right there. It'll come off of that and this ball right here will follow it right into the pocket every time. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. That's the way you do it. Okay, right now I'm going to show you how to use a mechanical bridge and how to use it right. Most people don't use it right. A lot of people use it, but they don't use it right. The truth is, is that when you put a mechanical bridge on the table and you're going to use it as your left hand for a bridge, what you should do is make sure it is stable on the table. You take your left hand and you put it where you want it, right behind the ball within about six inches if you can get that close and most of the time you can and you aim it right there you put the your stick shaft into the mechanical bridge 
And instead of shooting like this, or whatever, because what you're trying to do is come off straight. And it's the same thing. You don't want to move your shoulder. You want to move from your elbow to your hand. That is what you're trying to do. And the only way you can go is if you hold your elbow out straight, you can't do anything but go straight. This is the way to do it. And that's how you do it. Okay, this little deal here is about how to rack the balls, and how to rack them properly. This is an eight ball rack. Well, first of all, what I do is I take the one ball and I put it out front. That's just always the way I've done it. And then I go every other ball. A stripe, a solid, a stripe, a solid, a stripe, a solid, a stripe, and a little twist. I put in another stripe because no matter where you rack them or how you rack them, there's going to be a solid together or they're going to be striped together. There's no way of getting around it. So what you do is you rack that, and everybody has an even chance because these are the balls that usually go when something go when you hit the rack. All right, and the eight ball goes in the middle, and another solid. Now the thing to do is make this as tight as possible, and the reason why is because when that person breaks, what it does if they're real tight, it spreads really well and even. And uh, you have a better selection of shots. Now, if he doesn't make one, you have a better chance of running the table. If he does make one, then he's got a good chance of running the table. But the thing to do is make sure it's real tight so when the balls hit, they spread real even-like. And that's the way you rack eight ball. Now, I'm going to show you the proper way to rack nine ball. It's really a good technique to do this. The first thing you do, of course, you got to put the one in the front, the nine in the middle. But what I like to do is I like to put the three ball on this side and the two ball back here behind that nine on the other side. Here's the reason why. It's because if a person is breaking from that side and they hit, what happens is that the one ball go up that way, the three ball go up that way, the two ball come back down here, and the eight ball here in the back will bounce off this rail and go up that way, which leaves the nine ball down here. Now what happens is that this person is going to shoot the one ball, he's got to come all the way down here and shoot the two ball, he's got to go all the way back up there and shoot the three ball, and so on and so on. But you don't want this ball and that ball to be together. What you want to do is you want to separate the eight ball and the nine ball. So what you got to do is put the eight ball in the back, and when it comes off the rail it goes up there and the nine ball stays down here. So you have a better chance against the guy that is breaking. Now also, you want to make this as tight as you possibly can because when you pull it off, and if it's really good and tight, then that guy that's breaking, well, <laughs> that guy that's breaking, when he, when he breaks, that nine ball, most of the time, if it's really tight, won't hardly move. So he's not going to make it on the break for, against you. It'll hardly move. If it does move at all, it might move just a little bit. But that's it. That's how you rack nine ball. 